Hey, hey, trippers. All right, so as a lot of you guys know, I often wear a cowboy hat on this show. However, simply owning a hat does not a cowboy make. So today we're gonna head into the South Texas Hill Country to visit a small Texas town that is about as cowboy as they come. Bandera! Yeehaw! <laughs> This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Right here is the county known as Bandera, with the city of the same name. It's two hours from Austin and one from San Antonio. So close you can ride a horse. Ah, uh, no horse. Um, coyote then. Yeah, ride a coyote. Oh! All right, guys, here we are, Bandera, Texas. It sort of has pieces of all the things that we all love about hill country towns, right? There's some history, stories, great restaurants, shops. So there's lots of reasons folks from all over come to Bandera. There's definitely one thing that this town is most known for. It's not the quaint Main Street or the historic courthouse. It's not even the crystal clear Medina River that flows through town. Nowadays, Bandera's main claim to fame is that it's known as the cowboy capital of the world. And this is for a couple reasons. One, because Bandera has produced quite a number of rodeo champions, but mostly because Bandera was a main meeting place for all the cattle drives that were starting out on the Great Western Trail. Check out this map, here it is. You got Bandera down in South Texas, up through Oklahoma, on to Kansas, and then finishing at Ogallala, Nebraska. And you know, to this day, Bandera is actually still full of working cowboys. And generally speaking, they are a friendly bunch, but you know, there's a few here and there that are a little weary of outsiders. So I'm not saying it's dangerous, just be on your guard. We should probably be on our guard. Truthfully, Bandera's cowboy past isn't really past at all. You ain't from around these parts, are you? Well, I got news for you. This town here ain't big enough for the both of us. Hey, fella. If you're looking for trouble, you'll find it. It may seem like carnage, Ah, but don't worry, these guys are used to it. As members of the Bandera Cattle Company, well, they die all the time. Good take, everybody. I think we're done. Who's hungry? All right. Every Saturday, in fact, right behind the visitor center. And there's no better way to thank a cowboy for his service than to feed him. So we're headed to the OST, Bandera's landmark cafe on Main Street that's fully embraced the cowboy. In fact, you don't even have to leave the saddle to eat. So this is how we do it? That's a way to cowboy up to a bar right yes, there. Sir. I don't know if I've ever eaten on a saddle. you never eaten on a horse then, have you? Yeah, no, I haven't. Well, well you need <laughs> to come out to my place. I got a donkey you can eat off of, a horse you can eat off of. This is Tommy Knotts, fearless leader of the Bandera Cattle Company. And given his talents, well, he's probably been in more shootouts than John Wayne himself. So, you think the town of Bandera is deserving to be the cowboy capital of the world? Oh yeah, we have more dude ranches in this county than most places do. Uh -huh. There's been more PRCA, Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association members from this town. This town gets packed with tourists because of the cowboy mystique, you know. All right, so how do you eat lunch at the cowboy capital? What should we get here? Oh, everything's good in here. Oh yeah? They got good chicken fried steak, they got good, really good cheeseburgers. How about I get a chicken fry and you get a cheeseburger? I'm gonna get a cheeseburger, yeah. I'm so good. The OST first opened in 1921 for travelers along the old Spanish Trail Highway. And since then, it's been serving Texan food at its finest, mixing Southern traditions, Tex-Mex, and chuck wagon classics with ease. 
And no surprise, the large chicken fried steak is appropriately named the Duke. And here it is, partner. You should have got the big one. <laughs> this thing not only is, is huge this way, it's thick this way. There is a, a like a swimming pool's worth of gravy on top of this thing. Mm -hmm. You won't be hungry when you're through. Mm. Pretty good, huh? Well, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I have eaten a lot of chicken fried steaks in my life. And there's something about this one right now that tastes as good or better than any of them I've ever had. You'll remember it. Yeah, You'll remember, that's the you'll truth. Remember it. And it's no surprise why Tommy and his gunfighting posse eat here all the time. You got a lot of men and women, mm -hmm. it seems like, that like to, you know, dress oh, yeah. up and shoot each other. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we make a lot of noise and a lot of smoke. That's, <laughs> that's what we're famous for. I think when I'm done doing this show, I'm going to hang up this hat and get one like that and join y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, looks like I found my retirement plan in Bandera. I'll try and finish up this Duke and then mosey on down the road, little partner. Gosh, that is a terrible John Wayne. Like a good small town, Bandera's main street is full of diversions and distractions, with one must stop being the Bandera General Store. And like a good general store, this one has ice cream. The best way to wash down a chicken fried steak. There you go, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Old fashioned soda, chocolate with soda water, vanilla ice cream, hand mixed together, whipped cream, and a cherry on top. Oh, it's good. Let's go shop a little bit. There's a whole bunch of random. Generalities. Things for your general needs. Riding the range. That looks like a whole Wild West set. Yeah, I know. Snakes here. Ah, get away! Get away, you vermin <laughs> of the devil! And just in case you didn't come to the cowboy capital of the world with your own pair of boots, well, they got you covered. I could wear these. I could totally wear these. Whoa! Slip right on in. Ooh, a little tight. Ooh, a little stiff. You gotta take it on some day trips. Can it come uh -oh. off? Is she gonna come off? Just make sure you pick the right side. Ah. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna let somebody else buy them, and then I'll buy them from them in 20 years after they've broken them in. <laughs> As you see, Bandera is by no means a modern entry into the world of cowboy culture. In fact, for over a century, this town has been setting cowboy culture and sharing it with the world by any means necessary, including by magazine, as Bandera was home to the famed cowboy publication, Frontier Times. And while it's no longer in circulation, well, the Frontier Times Museum lives on. This is director Rebecca Norton. The museum was started by a very interesting gentleman named J. Marvin Hunter, a newspaper man, amateur historian, and he published Frontier Times magazine. Okay. He would encourage his readers to send him stories. Well, they not only sent him their family stories, but they began sending him all types of family treasures and relics. So he decorated his newspaper office with all of these wonderful artifacts. By 1927, Mr. Hunter had to knock down a wall in his office to expand his collection. And when that space was outgrown, well, he built this museum to share his wonderfully weird and random things with the world. How weird is it? Well, how about a mummified squirrel? Or a shrunken head? Or even a Texas two-headed goat? The goat was born on a ranch in Edwards County. It lived just a couple of days, but after it died, Mr. Hunter asked, could I have it for the museum that I'm building? And it's been here since 1933. I mean, there's pieces of this museum that feel like a circus sideshow. You're absolutely bit. right. And I like to think of Mr. Hunter as the P.T. Barnum of Bandera County. <laughs> yeah. He loved to tell a good story and so many things in the museum is reflective of the stories that he would like to tell. Yeah. Like the story of a South Texas man with a pet mountain lion that he loved so much, he had her stuffed when she died. He raised her from a kitten. She lived inside the house. She was so tamed that uh, Mr. Keith would bring her to town and she would sit next to him 
in his pickup truck. Oh. Yeah, that's way cooler than a fat house cat. But this museum isn't just oddities. There's also a Hall of Fame collection from local legends who've made cowboy history. One of our favorites is Ray Wharton, who was known as the Mighty Might. He was a small guy, but he was one of the best calf roping champions in the United States. He won the world champion in 1956 in Madison Square Garden. As you see, this museum is well worth the time. In fact, this entire town is full of worthwhile stops. You could spend an entire day exploring the beautiful Medina River. You could pop into St. Stanislaus Church, which was built in 1876 by Polish immigrants. And let me tell you, the art inside rivals any of the other painted churches. And then there's Bandera's most popular tourist attraction. And that is to go to a dude ranch. Basically, Western resorts where you get to go ride horses, dress up like cowboys, eat chuck wagon dinners. And while those are generally like overnight sort of places, and well, we're the day tripper. But don't fear, all right, because the day tripper still knows how to find some cowboy fun. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. We're headed to Juniper Hill Stables. And even though it's connected to the 007 Dude Ranch, well, it's still open to day trippers. Make that dude trippers. This is owner Eileen Connolly, who's gonna take us on a ride. Welcome to Juniper Hill Stables. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> about this. My faithful steed today is Killian, as in Killian's Irish Red. Each horse has their own little idiosyncrasy, you know, little things that you need to know, like with Killian, you don't kick him. Okay. okay, why is that? Because he's a retired roping horse. Oh. And so if you kick him, <laughs> he's going to go. We're going zero to 100 <laughs> real fast. Exactly. Okay. So then once we get everybody on their horses, um, I'll lead out. Um, we'll leave the, through this gate right here mm -hmm. and head towards the state park, which is about a 10-minute horse ride. Specifically, the Hill Country State Natural Area, where over 5,000 acres that were once a working cattle ranch are now open to the public with over 40 miles of trails. So what's really cool about this stable is that it adjoins the state natural area. And so you can just ride right on into the park. But truthfully, this is so pretty, there's not a whole lot of difference between what's inside the park and what's right around the park. It's all 100% hill country. And after a few minutes, we are in. The park is full of ups and downs. After all, they don't call this the hill country for nothing. I got old Killian here. He's a very cautious little pony, and I appreciate that. We going this way? Where are we going now? Come on. You see it. You see it. There we go, Killian. We made it together, and that's how this is going to work. It's a partnership, me and you. There are creek beds to cross, and even old relics of human history from the ranching days. Yeah, Eileen, I don't think uh, most Texans know this is out here. Oh, I don't think so either. I think this is one of the best kept secrets in Texas. Yep. Look at this valley. I mean, the way the sunlight kind of casts different shades of mm -hmm. green on the different layers of the, yep. the hills. I really feel this is one of the true treasures that we still have left in Texas, the ability to see this by horseback. There's nobody pushing you to do go any faster. You do it on your own time. It's awesome. Of course, you have no cell service. Yeah, <laughs> I've got no problem with no cell service. It's nice to kind of fall off the grid at time, <laughs> from time to time, right? And I think a lot of the people that come out and ride with me, a lot of my guests, service, I think they're a little frustrated at first, and then they put their phones away and they start looking around and taking a deep breath yeah. and realize it's not that bad. Ah, <laughs> right. While most of this is typical hill country terrain, well, there's always an element of unexpected when in nature. Look around at all this sotol. I'm not used to seeing this in the hill country, at least not this thick. Reminds me of the Chihuahuan Desert out west a little bit. You know, there's just something about seeing this park on horseback. That's cool. It's slow, you know, and you need to take it slow. Did you see over there? Whoo, wow. I mean, that view <laughs> is tremendous. Yeah, yep. I love it. Yep. To me, this is probably one of the most beautiful sights in the world. That's right amazing, here. that's yeah. amazing. And so I understand it was this, though, that made you just quit your job and decided you wanted to run mm -hmm. a stable. I love that I, story. Uh, I had a full-time career in Houston, and after riding out here for a few days, I basically called in to my boss and called in retired. <laughs> Ran away from home. <laughs> so I'm here. Wow, and you made your home on the range. Ago. 
Yep. It's a beautiful place to make a life for sure. And I can't imagine a better way to spend the afternoon. That no good, dirty, deeded rascal, he better get gone. Well, I think it's time that we get off the trail and head back to town, where we can see a completely different side of Bandera's natural history at the newly opened Bandera Natural History Museum. Well, as you see from all the stuff, it focuses on a much bigger natural history than just Bandera. Yeah, because I've never seen wildebeest running around the hill country, but I've also never seen a lot of full body mounts like are in this museum. I mean, check it out. Do you remember ever seeing a full mounted giraffe? No, never. Yeah. Once a private collection, all of these mounts were donated to create this museum. So visitors could encounter animals they may have never seen before. But just wait. And through these doors, is where the real safari begins. Come now, into the wilderness. We're observing the kudu and Robert's gazelle in its native African savanna habitat. And I know all these things because I read them just now. <laughs> this area jumps between habitats and continents with animals staged so realistically, the only thing they're missing is a pulse. I have a confession to make. I'm not a real scientist. I deserve to wear that hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. Porcupine, ostrich. Man, these dioramas are as good or better than any I've ever seen. And every area not only has its own music, but its own smell. I tell you, this is incredible. Oh, here we are. The great swamps of Africa. Whoa. Wow. Whoa, look at that Ooh, gator. Look how terrified that animal looks. I feel sorry for him. He has to stay here his entire infinity and almost get <laughs> eaten by a crocodile. It's, it, it never actually happens. Just the so fear of just it. Just the fear for infinity. That's gonna be tough on the nervous system. <laughs> and now the sunshine has broken into the great forest. I oh, know see, that. It's called sunshine, so it's called sunshine. No, yeah, well, that, yeah, I guess. If, to steal my poetry. Ugh, it just got freezing cold as if we're in the Arctic tundra. A museum like this highlights how many goats and deer we have in the world. My goodness. Mmm. Yeah. Goats and deer. Goats and deer. Two very delicious types of animals. You know, seeing all these animals has really got me thinking. I wonder what they taste like. And I'm hungry once again, but fear not. All right, guys, so it is time for some cowboy style chow. And if you're in Bandera on Wednesday night, well, you gotta head straight to the 11th Street Cowboy Bar for steak night. Oh man, but it is BYOS. Bring your own steak, I forgot. Where am I gonna find a steak at this hour? Oh wait, there's one right there. Oh, sweet. It's, a, it's about a one pound ribeye. Perfect. Six days a week, the 11th Street Bar is a place to kick back, do some honky tonking and two stepping, whether outdoor or inside the historic saloon itself. But one night a week, Wednesday night that is, they fire up the outdoor pits and pull out the fixins for steak night. And the meaty man behind this event is owner James McGrory. We have all the steak uh, seasons you'd like, so what we need to do is just take your steak itself okay. and get you some seasoning. It depends on what you like. You know, sometimes with a good steak, I just require salt and pepper. There but you go. I'll, I'll take the lead from the, the owner of this joint well, here you know, and do a little bit of this. We allow Kansas City to come in here every now and then. <laughs> but, uh, it is South Texas. <laughs> That's right. With the meat seasoned, time to get to sizzling. And throw it down on there and uh, boom. There we go. We get started with it. <laughs> and then that's when we need a drink. So this is awesome. You got four roaring pits over here. I mean, they're full of people that have just come out, brought their own meat. This guy's got some monster ribeyes and boudin. What's the craziest thing you've seen hit one of the grills here? I uh, had a 68-pound uh, halibut. Whoa! Yeah, that, that filled the whole grill. Monster. Monster. If you can grill it, you can bring it. 
But truthfully, steak night is about much more than steak. Was this your idea? It was our idea, Stella and I, and uh -huh. uh, we created it for a family event. A lot of times when school's not going on, you'll see all the kids in here and they'll be dancing with their fathers, grandfathers, and grandmas. It's not only just the cooking your steak, but it's the camaraderie of everyone. You know? Yeah. And that's so important. You know? And then we, all, we gotta teach our kids how to properly cook a steak, too. That's, that's, exactly. that's an important Texas tradition. It is. It must boy. be passed down. And it needs to be passed down to a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. With that said, I believe my steak is done. Not well done, but the perfect medium rare. To make it a full meal, well, for just a few bucks, you can buy the sides, making steak dinner perfection. Ooh, doggy. Oh, that's good. A good piece of meat cooked over hot coals. Give me a moment, that's a good bite. My compliments to the chef. I need to tell him that he perfectly cooked this steak. Is he around? Oh yeah. This is a cool place, you know? It's a big backyard full of your hometown friends. And you get to kind of hang around the pit together, cook dinner together, and then eat dinner together. Truthfully, anywhere, what better thing to bring people together than steak? You know, we could easily kill the entire evening here. But when in Bandera, looking for a nightcap, well, there could be no better joint than the one directly below the Bandera General Store, Arky Blue's Silver Dollar Saloon. After turning down the bright lights of Nashville in the 60s, musician Arky Blue bought this place and turned it into a cathedral of country music. Even on a random Wednesday night, it's filled with the music of local troubadours. You walk into this place, you kind of feel like you're stepping back in time a little bit. I like that. Yeah. This bar has been, it was built here. That's awesome. That thing's about 110 years old, I think. Oh. So is this place 110? It's right at it, yeah. Yeah. And over the years, the right band has played here many a time. Gene Watson, Ernest Stubb, Hank Williams Jr. Oh, there's been a bunch, all of them. Yeah. I went hog hunting with Hank Jr. twice. Oh, awesome. And Hank Williams Sr., well, he left his mark on this wooden table. Good names to pay pay homage to you oh, yeah. in this place, because yeah. it's kind of a Texas icon, yeah. right? Yeah, it is, yeah. And Arky himself, a living legend. Man, you know it's a good day when you can finish up at a place like this, just kind of soaking in the local flavor, you know what I mean? I, uh... Sorry about shooting your head. Well, I, it's actually seen worse days than this. You know, you're a pretty good looking guy. Oh yeah, me too. What a day. Bandera is a town for real rootin' tootin' Texas cowboys. The six shooter carrying, saddle riding, tall tail telling, chicken frying, steak sizzling, honky tonkin' type of cowboys, who based on today are the friendliest bunch of Texans on the range. You know, I never should have been nervous. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. I always wanted to be a TV show host. I'm better looking anyway. Come on, crew. There's a new sheriff in town. Oh, and a uh, Viacone. <coughs> Viacone Dios, amigos. Yeah, that feels good. So it is time for some cowboy style chefs. Stow? Stow. You don't eat steak. Oh, you do? You're a cooler horse than I thought. I want that in a kebab, I want that on a taco, and I want <laughs> this in a falafel. Eat it up, guys. This I'm, I'm the new reincarnated John Wayne. Oh, man, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I can't go in anywhere without permissions. <laughs> well, I guess I'm using a mountain block. I usually just, you know, stand about, you know, 20 yards behind the horse and run. I'd give him one of those. I just like to. <laughs> okay. All right, <laughs> that's good. 
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.